Hi everyone and welcome to another PeachPy compiler tutorial. You probably already know that you can work with PeachPy in the free lightweight editor Visual Studio Code uh, using our official extension. But did you know that you can actually already use the full Visual Studio 2017 as well? This video will actually show you exactly how. Let's begin by creating the project file. We've prepared one here, a standard MS build with PeachPy specific directives. We specify the output type as exe instead of the default library for a standalone DLL file. We'll target netcore 1.1, but other options would be 1.0, .NET 4.6, NetStandard 1.6, or anything compatible. Compile specifies which files are the target of the compilation, so we want all PHP files in all subdirectories. It's important to import the PeachPy SDK from the NuGet package that contains the core compile target that calls the compiler. This is referenced here and automatically downloaded by msbuild when calling .NET Restore. The compiler itself is part of the PeachPy compiler tools package. The code in the lower part is a temporary workaround for opening projects in VS 17. Before we can start using the project, we should manually restore the reference NuGet packages. Visual Studio is supposed to do this on its own when opening a project, but this way we prevent any potential issues. The command .NET restore downloads all the packages from the NuGet feed and saves them to the local cache. Whenever we add or change the references or change the target framework, we'll need to repeat this step. Now we'll open the same file again, but as a project this time. Visual Studio 2017 understands MS build projects and will do the rest of the work for us. For build purposes, it uses our SDK implicitly. Since VS 2017, the editor has a built-in code colorization of PHP scripts, which makes our work a lot easier and more comfortable. There's also menu command for .NET Restore, but it doesn't always perform the same as we showed on the command line. Right now, the editor provides a basic toolset for working with text, so don't expect any IntelliSense snippets or anything like that just yet. You won't find item or project templates just yet, but we're working on something in this regard, so stay tuned for some interesting updates. What already works well, however, are breakpoints and debugging, and it works much better than in standard PHP, which we'll see in a minute. Breakpoints are not formally defined in PHP, and sometimes they attach to the wrong place or not at all. With PeachPy, you won't have to worry about this, because breakpoints are determined with an accuracy of a single character. Even multiple commands in one line can be distinguished, and statements across several lines don't cause any issues. The for loop is the perfect example of the accuracy of breakpoints in .NET. We can now build the code to get the DLL or EXE, or we can launch the debug mode, which will also start the compilation. After launching, we can see that the build task invokes our compiler, downloaded as a NuGet package, and the compilation is running. The app is started and stops at the first breakpoint. From now on, we can benefit from everything that Visual Studio and .NET have to offer. The standard actions of stepping through the code, step into, step over, and step out. Notice that while stepping, the breakpoint even attaches to brackets. But this isn't all. In the case of our for loop, we can see the evaluation of specific expressions in its header. The same would apply for a for each loop and so on. The second standard feature is the display of local variables in Visual Studio. The .NET runtime does the rest of the work and allows us to see the values of the variables and the results of the evaluation operators. Here we can glance into the internals of PeachPy because some variables and operators are what's called compiler generated. We'll let the program finish by clicking on Continue, and we'll take a look at the second benefit of the .NET environment in Visual Studio. Notice the indication of milliseconds displayed after every debug step. This is another implicit feature that's part of a much larger one, the diagnostic tools. These are only available in the higher editions of Visual Studio, which could be particularly interesting to enterprise users. Within this package, you will have access to memory monitoring, CPU usage, exceptions, or garbage collection. Every PHP function is diagnosed, and we can see what percentage of time its execution took up in the context of the whole application. You heard right, this is really possible for PHP. You can also display the call tree, which can be even more telling in some cases. You can nicely see here if the problematic function is a part of the project or of some sort of external library. 
This is an absolute must-have for any serious application, as well as a great tool to reveal possible bottlenecks. What's pretty interesting is the option of creating a snapshot of the memory and display the instantiated objects, revealing how much memory they take up and how many instances we have, or even which entity maintains a reference to them. The diagnostics can also show events and their impact, as well as a general overview, including exceptions. Keep in mind that this is just an intro video. There will certainly be a lot more to show here in the future. If there is any other specific use you would like to see, let us know in the comments and we'll try to incorporate it into one of our next videos. A majority of the functionality is provided directly by .NET itself and the fact that PeachPy compiles the PHP code to standard .NET libraries. This offers the project a multitude of possibilities, including the whole .NET toolset, which is thus extended by yet another language. And that's it for now. We hope you liked the option of using PeachPy in Visual Studio 2017. Happy compiling!